another day, another dollar. Thank the Lord for another 24. God, I do that with you, man. I'm over here late night grind. I've been over here recording some, uh, not recording, but editing some other videos. You know, I started getting uh, burnt out on it. You know, I got, I haven't recorded any videos on uh, different videos in like probably a week just because I got so many other videos I've already recorded that I need to edit and, you know, upload. I've been uploading on my YouTube channel. I got my videos scheduled all the way out. It's May. I already got videos all the way out till September. So I'm trying to realist, I, realistically, I think I can get enough videos scheduled to where I got videos scheduled to the end of 2024, you know, and then why stop? I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to keep posting. We're going to work on, we're going to start on two. 2025, you know, but I was like, let me take a break, man, and make this video, correction officer video. Somebody wanted me to make a video on this topic. You know, we talking about how staff smuggle in their contraband to the inmates. You know, how do the inmates get their dope inside of a prison? You know, this is the thing, right? The main way it comes in is when uh, staff go through, when they get scanned through in the front lobby, you know, depending on your institution, how your prison or jail is set up, you either go, you either go through like a metal detector or you just walk right in. I remember when I worked at the county jail, we just kind of well, we had a metal detector, but they they never enforced it. We just walked in to work, you know. And we when you got to the slider, the staff working in control had to identify you, you know, you had to be in uniform, they had to make sure you're an officer, and then they let you through the sliders, you know. So it was probably all kind of dope flowing through that when I worked at the county jail, you know, I'm just being honest, just because they didn't really have, they, they didn't have anybody like an officer that was there, you know, to uh, challenge people and to check people's bags, things of that nature. Fast forward to the feds. I've been at two different federal prisons now. Uh, every institution as far as uh, federal facilities they have where you have to go through the metal detector. You know, you have a, uh, when you come into work, you get to the front lobby, there's an officer already up there and you have like a metal detector and you have one of those, uh, it's like an x-ray ion, it's an x-ray machine. You have to put all your book bag, your lunch bag, whatever you have, you have to put it in a pail. Like it's almost like if you're at the airport going through TSA, you have to put it in on, on the slider and they have to go through and the officer has to look for it. And, you know, they're checking for the main obvious things, like if you have a gun in your bag, uh, electronics, like a cell phone you're trying to smuggle in, things of that nature. But when you uh, look at it, there those are foolproof, you know, because if you ever, I'm going to give you a great example of how staff smuggle stuff in. You know, if you've ever watched Locked Up Abroad, the TV show, you know, where people are trying to, uh, a lot of times, they are in foreign countries and they're trying to smuggle in drugs into that country or out of that country. And they're going through the airport. You know, you see a lot of times they have stuff taped to their body, you know. And if it's like, let's say it's marijuana or cocaine, something of that nature, uh, and we have to go through the metal detector, it's not going to set the metal detector off, you know. So people probably can go through all the time. You know, you can go through probably a hundred times before somebody finally gets on, catches on, or uh, somebody tips off SIS and they start investigating you. So that's the main way that uh, staff smuggle in drugs, you know, or they say they may put it in a bag. You know, if you got an officer that's not really paying attention on the x-ray machine, they got something in a bag like some weed or a pack of cigarettes, shit like that. They can put it right in a bag and it gets right through, you know. Who's to say, you know, a lot of uh, staff, we you know, we smoke cigarettes, so we may vape, things like that. You know, who's to say it's not our personal cigarette, pack of cigarettes, or personal vape? Who's to say that? You know, that all goes through, too, you know. The thing with this, that I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that you can't possibly catch every little thing, you know. There's going to, the inmates, they're going to get their drugs in. They're going to get their dope in somehow, some way. You know, if they're not getting it from staff, a lot of times it comes in through visitation. That's a prime time when the inmates uh, attempt to smuggle their drugs in. You know, let's say, for instance, right, inmate such and such, he comes to visitation, his girlfriend's there. You know, they already been corroborating. They may have been writing letters, you know, talking about the plan, hatching their plan, putting their play together, you know, to get this dope in. You know, so the girlfriend, she comes in, 
you know, and let's say she got some balloons. She got some balloons either. She got them, I don't know, in her bra. Maybe she got them in her underwear or something or in her mouth, things like that. They come in, you know, uh, when you do visitation, usually the inmates are able to embrace, meaning they can get a hug and a kiss at the beginning and the end of the visit. You know, let's say shit. They uh they do they do a regular kiss a hug you know everything's all cool at the end of the visit the uh right before the visit's about to end the girlfriend goes in the bathroom she takes out she takes out some damn balloons full of heroin or cocaine K two PCP I don't know uh crack man I don't know man they get some crazy they get some crazy shit in there and these inmates are getting high out of their mind you know it's like an epidemic in prisons nationwide especially. At the one I work at, man, it's like almost daily these inmates are smoking. There's like they're smoking rat poison. They're taking chemicals, spraying it on paper and smoking and shit. I'm like, you're going to fucking fry your brain and you're going to fucking uh, be in a, a damn brain dead coma, man. You keep it up. You know, I'll, you can't tell them nothing. No, man, I guess they trying to get high uh, enough to escape their reality. I don't know, man. But one thing's for sure, rules is rules, man. It's against the policy. They ain't supposed to have it, you know. But like I said, getting back to the story, the visitation. She go in the bathroom real quick, you know, lock the door. She take, ooh, she take out that shit, put it in her mouth, you know, something like that. Y'all probably seen stuff like this that's happened on uh, TV shows or movies. I know I have, you know. I seen one, I can't remember what, I think it was Power, the 50 Cent show. The dude was sitting at the table and the CEO was on the tape. It was a dirty staff. Remember, she was just standing there, the inmate, he was like some kind of kingpin, right? And he he's there with his girlfriend, he got a bag of potato chips, but inside the potato chips was like uh little uh like balls of dope, it looked like it was popcorn, and he was eating it, putting it in his mouth. You know, that's how inmates get in dope too. They swallow the stuff and then they, they you know they go to the bathroom and they shit it out. You know, there's been times where an inmate suspected or they got caught doing that. They have to go in a cell. They get locked in a cell and they stay in there until they defecate. And then a staff member has to go through their feces and find and recover the dope. You know, I've never done that personally, but I've, I've seen inmates that have got placed on that status. You know, so the girlfriend can swallow, swap, put it in her mouth real quick. They go to kiss. You know, they they hug. They turn away from the CEO. Can't see them like that. They kiss him. She put, putting it all in his mouth, man. Now he hurry up, you know, stuff like that. They're supposed to do a, a thorough search, you know, once they get done with visitation. We take them in the back room. We take off all their clothes, search all their clothes. You know, you you uh, going through their pants, their shirts, their socks. You turn to take their boots or their shoes, look in it, turn it over, stomp it. Uh, you're supposed to hold their underarms up. They strip down butt naked. The inmates, when we strip them out, they also, they're supposed to open their mouth ah, like that. Make sure they ain't got nothing in their uh their mouth like contraband. If they have like dreads or long hair or afro, they're supposed to go through their uh, head. You're supposed to look in their ears behind that and they have to turn around, you know, this is kind of graphic, but it's a part of the job. If you want to be a correction officer, you may have to do this. They have to turn around. They have to uh, spread, you know what? Then they have to squat and they have to call. The reason we make them squat and cough is to see if they have anything they may have stuck up, you know where. You know, the inmates, they that's what it's called keistering. You know, they try to stick some kind of drugs or or uh things they're not supposed to have up the uh, you know, up the back there, and they try to sneak it back into the prison, you know what I'm saying? And then what else? They gotta hold up their uh their their private area, you gotta look all in there, you know, make that's how that's a thorough strip search right there. You know, you checking you checking everything, you making sure they don't have anything on them, you know, this and that, you know. But getting back to the staff, you know, like I said, it's it's so easy probably to get stuff in, you know, you could just you know, the prison is so big, there's only like probably one or two patrol cars that's running, that's driving around the prison, you know. So somebody could just drive up to the fence, throw something over like that. There's so many different ways that the inmates get their uh, their contraband in, you know. As far as staff, though, and how, how you could possibly detect if a staff member is dirty, you know, I've, I've never uh, personally myself uh, 
discovered the staff member was dirty and, you know, it had to report. I've never been in that situation yet. Knock on wood, you know, but when you start to get, you know, the, the feeling that something just doesn't seem right or something doesn't just look right, certain things in a correctional setting just don't look right. You know, you got a female staff member, you know, she constantly has this same inmate in her office for long periods of time, you know, or they go in there somewhere and close the door. Or you got an officer, you know, he's always with it. I mean, he takes them to a back part, a secluded area on the unit. You know, things like that. Certain things don't look right. You know, I, I would I, I would suggest, you know, if you work in corrections and you think somebody's dirty, I would always suggest that you for sure know. Don't just assume anything because those are serious accusations, you know. Don't ever just say some outright that somebody's dirty without having factual information, knowledge, or you seen firsthand a staff member make like an exchange with the inmate. You know, they didn't th they didn't see you, but you saw them something of that nature. Otherwise, you can't just go off a of hearsay or you can't just uh, automatically assume that somebody's dirty, you know, or that's they're a corrupt staff, you know, because like I said, those are serious accusations, you know, and I've seen I've seen some hostile situations at work amongst my coworkers. You know, I've seen situations, man, where it went down in the parking lot over something somebody said. I'm talking about, you know, one of the officers or staff members was like, you know, they it, it got to that point. They were like, shit, you can meet me out in the parking lot, man, and we can we can uh we can square up out in the parking lot. You can see what's up out in the parking lot after work, man. And they went out there. I'm talking about, you know, they put them hands up, man. They started throwing hands. You know, all because of what somebody said. Somebody said this gossip, workplace drama, you know, or somebody getting accused of doing something, you know. So that's why I always say, you know, always have concrete evidence, factual information, you know. If you're not sure, you know, but if you got like a strong hunch or strong suspicion that somebody is doing something, one of your coworkers that they're not supposed to be doing, you know, you see them doing things, you see them moving a, a certain type of way. You see them letting out the cert, the same certain inmate after count or uh, after lights out, things of that nature. Then maybe you could put a bug in SIS's ear. You know, SIS, that's like the um, the intel or the investigation part, the investigation team within the prison system. You know, they're in charge of investigating gangs. They're in charge of investigating things like Who's running stores on the unit? Who's the, the kingpin? Who has all the dope? Who's selling all the dope on the units? Who's, uh, you know, has contraband? Who has nigh? Who's who's known for making hoots? Things like that. You know, they, they get a lot of their intel from uh, inmate snitches, you know? That's how uh, SIS gets a lot of their intel on who, who's doing, who's not, who's doing things they're not supposed to be doing. You know, they have inmates that like to tell. It just is what it is. That's a part of uh, prison. You know, people in there are snitches, you know, and that's a good thing. You know, that helps them out. That helps them do their job. That helps them curve, uh, keep down, you know, the, the contraband that's flowing in. Staff members attempting to introduce contraband into the institution. So maybe if you, you got a strong hunch, you know, you don't necessarily confront that officer or you start spreading rumors about that officer, you know, unless you, like I said, you got concrete evidence, you seen them pull out a bag full of weed or some crazy shit, something fell out they bag that just, it was crazy, like, why Why do you have a, a bag? It looks like, I don't know, you know, but if you get like a hunch or a suspicion, you could put a bug in SIS's ear, you know, be like, you know, I... Off the record, you know, I don't know about such and such, man. They they kind of move funny around a certain inmate. You know, maybe you want to, uh, you know, start investigating. Not investigating, but, you know, maybe you can run the cameras or just, uh, you know, just uh, watch how they move, you know, because something just doesn't feel right, you know. And that that may, that may uh, if the, the staff member is, in fact, dirty or they're uh, uh, bringing in contraband, doing things for the inmates they're not supposed to be doing, you know, that could... That could lead SIS into the right direction as far as apprehending, you know, and getting that staff member out of there. Because one thing about it, man, you know, like I said, contraband is going to get into prisons. You can't stop every single piece of contraband from being introduced into a correctional facility. It's impossible. You know, they have so many ways. They 
they I remember uh they were getting it in in the mail. They were getting like little strips. It looks almost like if y'all remember those little breath, those little strips of breath mist you put on your tongue. They were getting some kind of drug in, man, and they it was like they could uh I don't know how the hell they were doing. They could melt it down or put it in water and then it dries up and they smoke the powder. Somebody was like one strip of this paper was like worth like thousands of dollars on the inside, things like that, you know. But when SIS does their job or a staff member eventually gets caught doing something, bringing in contraband, you know, it's it's a good thing because like I said, contraband, you know, although you're not able to catch it, all of it, the stuff that you do catch, you can get it off the yard. You know, that's creating a safer environment, a safer institution, you know, because with, with contraband, drugs, knives, shanks, things like that, it's creating an unsafe environment, you know. Until you know the dirty staff, you know, I, I, I got nothing for them. You know, me personally, I, I, I enjoy the job and I take the job too seriously to ever consider doing something like that. You know, I got too much time invested in. I've worked too hard, you know, to take shortcuts in my life, you know. And this is the thing. The people that are dirty, the staff members that bring in stuff, they always, 10 times out of 10, they eventually get caught. You know, no matter how long you think you can get away with it, you know, whether you do it one time or you've done it a hundred times, you're going to eventually get caught. You know, the inmates are going to keep coming to you. They're going to keep demanding more and more of you, you know, to bring in this, bring in that. And then it's going to get to a point where you're like, no, nah, I'm not doing this anymore. They already got you on the hook. All they got to do is tell SIS, tell the warden, the captain, the lieutenant, oh, such and such been doing this. I got all the receipts. I got all the transactions. Uh, His family, I sent them this X amount of dollars via cash app for him to bring me in this dope and it's over. You're going to go to jail. You're going to lose your job. It's not worth it to me, you know, for what? I make plenty good money working overtime and making an honest day's living and going home and living my best life out here in the free world. I'm not trying to jeopardize my freedom, you know, doing no time in nobody's jail unless I'm going in there to work, you know? I got too much to live for outside of work in the free world to ever try to take no shortcuts like that and jeopardize my job. No, sir, it's just not going to happen. You know, I'm just for what? Just to make a few extra dollars. You know, it may take a little longer, but all you got to do, you could pick up some extra shit. There's plenty of overtime going around, man. Stop being lazy. Stop looking for shortcuts. You know, if you're that type of person, you don't need to be in corrections anyway. Like I said, you're going to get caught. Eventually, you're going to get burnt. You're going to get fried. You're going to go down. You're going to go to jail, hopefully, and lose your job, you know, because it's bad for corrections. We don't need you in there creating this unsafe environment for your coworkers, you know. Y'all like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel at The Ghetto Bodybuilder. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok at The Ghetto Bodybuilder. I got merchandise for sale. Shop with me on my website. I got a whole lot of gym, fitness-related t-shirts and hoodies. You know, those of you who don't know, I started my channel initially. I was talking about working out and fitness when I started my channel back in 2022. But then I, I've been working as a correction officer for 13 years. So I made a video like a few months back talking about how I felt about the job and it kind of took off. So I've been making these videos too, you know, just a little bit of everything. I sprinkle in, uh, you know, correction officer videos, motivational gym, fitness, diet, how to get shredded, how to bulk up, how to uh, increase your bench press, stuff like that. You know, y'all got any comments? questions, concerns, any ideas or topics for future videos, drop a comment and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Y'all know how we coming. Let's get motivated.